Hey guys, it's Tom here, and something I have kind of briefly touched on in some of my videos, my isotope videos, is using module chains. So on my system, I hit C, and the module chain window comes up. If that doesn't work for you, click isotope RX10, preferences, keyboard. You're going to have to type in module chain with no space. Hit enter, and it's going to bring up this. Uh, this keyboard window is a, it's it's such a nice thing to have to be able to set up your own custom shortcuts so you can set up or remove uh, this this shortcut you can assign it to any key on your keyboard you want but I use this preferences uh, pane the keyboard pane and preferences all the time to you know set up new shortcuts or change shortcuts based on the show I'm working on because different shows have different dialogue problems but uh, I've had a lot of questions about module chains I have a, a, a set of module chains on my website that can help you get started if you don't have your own. When do you use module chains? Well, anytime you're going to be using more than one module at a time, like say you have a, a scene that has multiple issues, it's consistent through the whole scene. You've got, like you can see in this clip, we've got a generator hum, we've got some broadband noise, we've got some clicks up here. Uh, maybe it's got sibilance, like just any time you're going to be doing multiple steps, the module chains help save you immense amounts of time because instead of opening dehum and hitting render and then closing it and opening D Russell and render and close, even with, with keyboard shortcuts, that gets really tedious. So the module chains is just a way to stack the different tools and what's really cool about these module chains is you can actually stack them with plugins that you have. Um, for example, this is uh, Acon Digital Extract Dialog, but you can go here to your presets. Uh, let's see, where do you go? Select plugin. That's right. And then audio units, VSTs. So you can, in Isotope, process with things like Cedar or Goyo or whatever flavor of plugin of the month you have you can set that up in your module chains. You have to own the plugin, but it's a nice thing to do. I don't have that on my module chains because I want you guys to be able to use the plugins that you have. I don't know what you have. Everybody's got different preferences on that. So mine are simply set up to use the default modules in Isotope. And you can see what happens with a module chain is you've got default, which is nothing. And then you've got all the Isotope presets here listed alphabetically acoustic guitar tamer all the way down to uh what is it rhythm guitar cleanup so below here is where your presets or presets you get from people are going to go and i've tagged all mine with tb so that if you download mine you know this is tom's uh, and you can obviously create your own yours are going to be better suited to specific projects that you have so feel free to use these as a starting point or make your own from scratch. But people have asked for going through my module chains, so here we go. Uh, TB triple A. This is kind of a just general cleanup module chain. You can see I've got D hum and D crackle on, and then D Russell and D construct off. These are all very conservative settings. That's why it's called triple A because I I will use this if it's just. I have to get through something really fast, but I don't want to do any harm to the audio because it's like a higher profile show or, you know, just in general, I want to treat it very carefully. I don't want to hit it with a hammer. D. Russell, I have this pretty low, but it's not on right now. So you'll have to turn this on if you need to D. Russell, you know, some leaves in the background or some cloth noise. But this is kind of just a catch all starting point. Deconstruct, you'll see I've got the tonal down and the noisy up, and I have a frequency selection. So this is specifically to target uh, like this. It's a pretty common cloth noise that happens just in this selected range. You can tweak this however you want, but I I had this set up to, to target like it's it's like specific to DPA lab. So it's really weird and higher budget productions tend to use that. So even when, when labs are well rigged, they will have some clothing noise. So that'll take care of some of that. But both of those are unselected. So that's TB AAA. TB Boom Good. 
I've got just de hum, really conservative setting, and de crackle, uh, fairly low, 2.6 with high quality and low amplitude skew. So if your boom sounds good and you just want to take out the stage hum or Jenny hum and get rid of the little crispy things up here that seem to plague every audio file, this is a great starting point. And you see, I, I kind of have it alphabetical, but I've got boom and then I've got a plant and then I've got lab and then I've got some extras down here. But that's because I generally have the boom on top. So it just helps me kind of organize it. Now, what if you have a noisy boom? Well, I've got a little bit of dialogue isolate added to that boom good. It's just knocking down 5 dB, which is generally enough. Sometimes it's too much. Uh, the TB booster is really cool because, well, let me show you on this file what this will do. I've got dialogue isolate set up to boost the dialogue and to reduce the noise. And then I think I have, yeah, I have some extra gain applied. This is for like really low sound that's whispered. Like say they're talking normally, one line's whispered. You wanna try this module chain and I'll show you what it does. So it's going through each of the things, dialogue, isolate, and then gain. And you can see it's boosted that up to account for the, the it, like lower level of the file. So it will bring up the noise a little bit. So you might want to do this after you do the boom cleanup. But generally what I'll do is I'll go through a scene and like get everything smoothed out. And then I'll go back and be like, well, I can do a little more to dig this line out. Uh, for hissy, let's see here. Yeah, so uh, you can see the booster, Dialog Isolate and Gain, and then on Hissy, I've got the Dialog Isolate just on a frequency selection from 1500 to 24K. So that's going to take off some of the hiss that's in like the upper range of the scale. And then I've got a low plant, or sorry, plant low car. This is for when they have the a boom mic in the footwell of a car or down below the actor's chest. It's really nice uh, for taking out the hum, the crackle, and then I also have a really just general low, uh, no, high pass filter, sorry, to get rid of some of the boominess. And also when they close the door, there's always that huge gust of wind that comes in and blows out the mic. So it'll help deal with some of that. Uh, lav okay. It's de hum, de crackle, de plosive, which just has a low frequency selection of 0 to 100 hertz. And then de rustle, very conservative settings, 1.2, advanced joint channel. This is like, okay, the lav is okay, but it's not great. You can see the lav good. I have one less of the modules going on. So if the lav is good and just needs a tiny bit of help, you can see the reduction strength on the de rustle is like super low, 0.8. Uh, lav thumpy. Deplosive, decrackle, and dewind. I found that dewind on super low settings helps get rid of some of that cloth bumpiness down at the, the low end. Very thumpy. I added, uh, I think I added de-rustle to this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I added a de-rustle to it um, to help get rid of more of the cloth noise. Lav noisy is all that plus a little bit of dialogue isolate, just, you know, 5 dB off. That's kind of as far as I push Dialog Isolate. TB Quick Batch Process is, I've had shows come in where uh, they have wanted to pre-process the production sound because it was recorded super low, like maybe it was 32-bit or just the levels are really low. So I've done this for that purpose, like before the, the sound is even synced up in Resolve to boost it up, to normalize the tracks, and then also to just take off a tiny actually this one is pretty yeah this one's pretty big this is almost like a cedar like that cedar plugin they have on the sound devices recorders it's kind of like that so you would want to use this like just to get it to where you can hear the words and you'd probably want to relink to the original files after that tb plastic bag is to remove a crinkling bag like maybe that's a plastic bag or whatever uh, that the actors are using. It's going to knock down some of that, but it's not going to take it all out. And then TB Foley and ADR Mix Room. I found, like, when I've had to record Foley in my mix room or voiceover ADR, you know, mix rooms aren't set up to be, like, an ADR stage or a Foley stage. 
So there's generally a tiny bit of hum. There's going to be, uh, especially for Foley, you want to get rid of some of the some of the transients because you don't want it to just be all clicks. And then I've got D-Russell deactivated, and I do have Spectral Denoise on because I've got my mix computer in my room, and there's just a tiny, tiny bit of fan noise. It's like super low, like down, down, down in the mud, like 42 dB, but I still wanted to knock down a little bit of it. So I've got the tiny bit of noise reduction there. And so, yeah, those are the module chains. Um, hopefully they help you out. They're a starting point for people. It's kind of just a, a cheap way for me to give you guys something for supporting my channel. So hopefully if you buy them, this helps. If you have any questions, obviously you can email me or, um, or comment on the video and I'll try to answer them where I can. As far as installing these, how you would want to install these is you need to go to your, your uh, main hard drive Go to Users, Your Name, Documents, Isotope, RX Audio Editor, User Presets, and you can see you've got Batch Processor, Module Chain. Download this file um, that you get from my website, highlight everything, copy it, and then paste it into your Module Chain folder that's on this path. I've got this path on, the, uh, on my website if you forget it, which I know I would. Um, but you can put these here, you can rename them. They're going to show up along your own module chain presets if you have those. So hopefully this helps you guys. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions, just give me a comment and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Till next time, take care.